Hi, welcome to my playhouse and today I have another project. This is the IBM X3650 Model 1 and I have a friend of mine who has one of these and he's using it every day in his uh, mechanic shop and he has had it for, for years and it runs an old edition of VMware. This is the VMware version 5.5 and he's, he's using one 4.1 and it's starting to do funny things and has to reboot from time to time so I wanted to upgrade his system but he uses the system every day uh, so I wanted to upgrade his system with as little downtime as possible not, not as possible because then I would just bring another server and move things over on the fly but I'm gonna try to make it simple and not move too much and not disconnect my own servers but I wanted to what I was thinking about was I will install a new server on some disks here at my place and then just bring all the disks and exchange his six hard drives and um, I just made a video where I put new disks in this bottom server I found that you can uh, put two terabyte SATA disks in here uh, he doesn't need that much space so I will exchange these disks to SAS drives um, 73 gigabyte SAS drives it's like the disks that I have here on the shelf it's a 3.5 inches drive and it's 1500 15,000 RPMs and it's 73.4 gigabytes of data and I'm gonna put six of those in his server and configure them as a RAID 5. I was testing this server with a, a Windows 7 VMware machine and I'm not that fond of installing Windows 7 machines so I'm actually gonna I'm gonna move this away from it before I, I take out the disks because I might never get it back so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna down this machine. Just gonna power it, power down guest. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Downing that one. And I'm gonna move it to one of the other machines. Just so that I don't have to reinstall. Come on, okay. And we're gonna migrate it. Change data store and yes. And I'm just gonna put it on that one and choose the data store. Just uh, whatever. That one. Next. And it usually takes quite a while, so I'm not gonna bother you with that. It looks very fast until it gets to 30% and then it stops. So that's, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> Finally, this thing moved. It took oh what did it say it took it has taken over two and a half hours to move that VMware I don't know what's wrong here but never mind now we can down the server down server are you sure pretty sure why well that's okay okay down server and it's downing so now the server has shut down and I'm gonna take out these disks these are the two terabyte disks that I tried last in the last week video so I'm gonna take those out and this is the normal 73.4 gigabyte 15 round 15,000 rounds per minute and it's SAS disks that are coming in So now we're booting the server and I'm going to go into the disk configuration and it's going to be complaining about that the disk configuration has changed. And it's booting and now it's going to be 
showing us other information about the network cards. They should be coming shortly. The first network port, the second network port, I think there are. And now it's gonna show us the have to press Control A to go into the IBM Server Rate Configuration Utility. Cool. And it's just in a few seconds. It will be complaining about that all the disks. It was just. It has just gotten used to them. Now they're gone. <laughs> Sorry, dude. And yeah, the following. Members cannot be configured. Press enter to configure. Press enter to accept the current configuration. Mm, I'm not going to do that because that's crap. Control A to enter the uh, IBM server rate configuration utilities. We're going to do that. Uh, Control H to pause the configuration. Oh, and now I wasn't fast enough. Let's see. Oh, it. It went in there anyway, so everything is cool. Let's start by seeing if it can see the disks. The six SCSI disks. Uh, the six, cool. And we're just gonna configure those. We're gonna initialize them first, all of them. And yes, and it's initializing the six disks. Two, three, four, five, and come on, number six. There we are. Cool, and we can create a new array. And um, I use insert here to mark the disks. So every time I press insert, they're put over here, which means I'm going to be doing something with this disk. So enter to that, and we're going to configure a RAID 5, and we're going to call it uh, EX. Oh. and the rest is good done creating array and here it says that uh, I'll be able to use the array immediately but the array performance will be affected during the auto sync process and we saw that in the last video uh, that that really affected the performance of the disks. But well, that's cool. Let's escape. And escape. And we'll just we'll just leave it here for now and go see something else. Here at the computer, I am at this homepage, or Rufus, I don't know how to pronounce that, but I want to make a USB stick that can boot the ESXi 5.5 and install that. And I'm going to use this program to do that. And this is the homepage where you can download it, and it's right there. Download. Um, and I guess it's that one. And we're gonna download that to the computer. I haven't really done that yet. So now it's down there and install. Yes. Uh, wanna check online? No, it's brand new. And there it is. So. In this program, we can choose 
what we want to do first. First, I'll put in the USB stick. In the computer over here, and it might pop up. It might not pop up. Okay, and this is actually an old USB stick with the ESX 4.1. Very uh, funny because it's exactly a server like that that I want to upgrade. So we that's the right device anyway. And this is probably cool over all of this, but I'm going to change the label now. To 5.5 point and I have downloaded the new somewhere it is. It's right there. Here I have VMware 5.5.0 update blah 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 and we're gonna choose that one. I have version 6 laying here but it's like the beta release thing. I haven't, I haven't really tried it yet. I downloaded it and didn't play with it. It's stupid but 0 0.0 and we are gonna say that we want to create We want to do a ISO file, create bootable using ISO file, and we want to use that file and open. And I think when we press start, it's going to complain about something here. Yes. And if we don't press yes, it's going to ruin everything. So I'm going to press yes. Yeah, and it's gonna warn me that I'm about to delete the disk, the USB stick already in. Sorry about that. And it's now creating the bootable USB stick. That's the Rufus, and it's really cheap. It's freeware, or oh, free. Oh, I didn't read if it, if there was anything with it, if there was any restrictions, but. Can see the home page while we wait. Mm. Not much of anything. Well, it's gonna be exciting to see if this works. It usually works, I've used this multiple times. It says it's done. Let's see if it works. Here's the USB stick. Just checking that up. And let's bring it out into the server. Okay. Around here, there's a it in the other USB slot, right there. And go out of this. To choose your boot device, you press F12. And it will give me the options of how do I want to boot. Now we can see if it finds the, the disk array that I just made. Yeah, one RAID 5 disk right there. USB stick is still there. Beeping about something.
and we have the option of choosing how to boot and I'm gonna choose the USB key disk right there and it's a 4 gigabyte sounds about right uh, this boot only cool that's a new thing I've never seen that before oh exit and continue booting that way and it's booting and now we have the option of installing ESXi or booting from the local disk we're gonna install from this one and the installation of VMware ESXi 5.5 is starting this will take a while and the camera has focus problems there we are. the IBM 3650 model 1 here the USB connections on it is only USB 1.1 that means they're slow this will take forever and ever and ever but it is working it will work Well, wouldn't you know, now it wants us to uh, install VMware and to get here took about an hour. So the USB device is very slow but it does work. We're gonna continue and I'm gonna be sure to press 11 because if I press escape I have to start all over. 11, scanning for devices and that's for hard drives. It want to know where we can install this and we can install it on we're gonna choose that one and now that I am in Denmark I'm gonna choose this is only the keyboard I'm gonna use choose Danish and it's usually up here there we are and I'm going to type in the secret password. And the password just match. Thank you. And continue. And now it wants to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Uh, 11. And it will now install the ESXi 5.5.0. Now it has successfully been installed. And I'm gonna go around here and oh, let's just show that. Let's take out the USB stick. The reason I wanted to make it on a USB stick is because if if I for some reason mess up the replacing of the discs, I would like to bring this USB stick and be able to to install the server from the USB stick uh, as a backup. I would probably use the RSA adapter. Uh, primarily because this is very slow but it's very nice to have a backup so I'm just gonna place this outside of the screen and press reboot and the server will reboot okay VMware is ready to be configured um, and you press F2 to configure it right now it has taken a DHCP address 
and it's um, it has a IP version 6 IP number as well I don't want it to have that so I'm gonna go in there there we are and I'm gonna configure that it's under configure network and network IP configuration and we're gonna set it to having a static IP number and it's gonna have number 100 and that's okay and okay and the IP version 6 configuration and I'm gonna disable IP version 6 and press okay it wanna reboot when you change the configuration for IP version 6 But until further, that's about the changes I want to do in here. Here it comes and says that it has noticed that I'm doing network configurations and um, to make these changes I have to reboot. So yeah, I have to do that, yes. And it's rebooting the, the host again. The server has booted. It now has the right IP number, it's number 100, and there is no IP version 6 information. Um, I'm not going to be using it anymore, so we're going to shut it down. F12, and I'm just going to put in the secret password, and it's going to be shutting down. And we're going to choose F2 to shut it down, and it's going to be sh shutting down. And no need to see that. I'm gonna be taking out these discs and it's gonna be a problem to, uh, to... I think they have to go in in the right order. One, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And to do that, I found a label machine and I've already made the first label and I'm just gonna print the next one label and one copy check and it's gonna print me another label there we are so now I have two labels and to have as little waste as possible I I printed the discs I had printed three at a time so I'm just gonna And the six discs are labeled one, two, three, four, five, six. And I can now take them out and I can hopefully put them back into the server at the website and they will be in the right order. I have put back in the six two terabyte discs that was in this server originally because I thought, well, I might as well try this out. Um, see what happens when the, when the server sees six new disks. I want to see if I'm gonna be able to boot the server and tell it to use the disk configuration on these servers on, on the server now and it should be able to boot the, the ESXi 5.5 that was on those, on those disks. So I'm gonna try that out weird I got a I got a memory failure up here I wasn't expecting that detected on branch 1 channel 2 on previous boot okay hmm. that's odd never mind that let's see what it finds out down here I'm not pushing anything I'm just letting it run and it actually found the RAID 6 one array found um, curious if it's just gonna use that one without no hesitation just made a couple of warning beeps hmm, yeah and then it, it it loads VMware that was too easy no complaining whatsoever. 
Okay. If it's that easy, it's almost boring. Yeah, so right now I'm on location and I'm about to turn, shut down the server so that I can replace the disks. And right now I've already shut down three servers on the virtual machines. Uh, three virtual machines it is. And I'm shutting down two more. And then we'll go in and replace the disks. Just right click on one more and have it. guest and hopefully this will be a walk in the park and as I said this is a mechanic shop and this server is living a harsh life uh, look at that every couple of months half year uh, it's a down the server and I blow it through with an air gun but uh, today it's getting new disks. All the servers are now off, so now I can right click on it and shut down the server. Yes. Reason? Mm, okay. And the server should be shutting down. And here is the new hard drives for it. So let's let's get those on the way. It's already very quiet in here, so the server is blinking, it's off. Right there it's off, and I'm gonna take out these discs and put them in the right order. Like, if this fails miserably, I would like to be able to put them back in. One and two. The new discs are in, and I'm gonna turn it on. So, yeah. Looks good so far. Can't really see anything from in here. Okay, I found one small problem. It seems that I haven't enabled the ex executes CPU features to be enabled in the BIOS. So I'll have to reboot and do that again. Otherwise, it found the array really without any problems. So this is just a minor hiccup. Right now, booting the server, and I just hit F8 for going into the BIOS and. I hope that I can find this bottle that I have to enable to get this up and running. Okay, here we are inside of the virus, and if I'm not much mistaken, it's here under advanced features, or sorry, advanced setup, and under the CPU options, and I think it's this one that I have to enable, enable. Yes, escape and escape and let's save the changes, save setup, uh, enter and let's exit, mm. yes, and we'll boot again and see if it boot is ESXi 5.5. Up here there is a Synology disk station and it's it's only it's a rather it's a couple of years old it's a DS 411 J and it's actually one of the cheaper model but on a station like that you're able to configure iSCSI and on the on the server you can connect to this iSCSI drive and what I did was I moved all the VMware machines over on this Synology box where uh, I can now move them back on the server when I connect to the server. So the first thing I have to do is of course I have to get the server up and running and then I need to connect it to the Synology box and connect to the different servers. 
and then move them back one by one. And here is the array. It found the RAID 5 array. And let's see when it starts booting. Okay, it actually it, it booted VMware. So now I should be able to go over and connect to VMware. I'm connecting it to a remote uh, vCenter to be able to do what I want to do, move the servers back. Finally, I got it. It seems that I'm not using the same network adapter. I'm not using the same uh, network port at my Playhouse that I am using here. So there was no co network connections, but when I figured that out, it connected just fine. Now I just need to go in and configure the iSCSI adapter in here. Start by giving it an SCSI adapter. Um, add an iSCSI adapter, yes. And connect to the Syn Synology box. Here, now I got the, the data store one, which is the six SAS disks in the server. And I have the Synology iSCSI. Um, NAS box there. Uh, the first one is on three is 333 gigabytes and the other one is 999 gigabytes. So now I just have to connect to the servers on the Synology and copy them over to the server. Here is the data store browser and I'm on the Synology NAS and I'm just taking one machine at a time and adding it to the inventory. Add to inventory, and uh, I have I have copies of the machines. This is a production site, so I'm very careful not to do anything stupid. And up here, the machines are coming in on the new host one by one. as a Windows 2000 server. That really was very very easy except that in at my playhouse I use used one network and here uh, the server was connected to the other network port. Uh, when I changed that back it, it worked perfectly no problem whatsoever and right now I have moved all the machines back from the storage up here and over to the hot drives on the machine and that was it was much faster on version 5.5 so that was pretty cool so yeah it's possible to uh, install VMware on a different server and move all the hard drives to another server and boot them there so I was able to do a lot more work here in much less time because I could prepare from home and bring the work here. So I hope you found this interesting and, and that it will help you at some point. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Have a nice day. Bye bye.